Okay, let's talk about a bass sound for a minute here. We'll be dealing with the Minimoog here, which it seems no matter what new comes out, I always gravitate back towards it. There's something about the, uh, the dirtiness of the filter and that old analog rub that I still love and still like to hear. Um, this is a good place also to talk about some basic synthesis. Um, the Minimoog has three oscillators, which are always fed through a low-pass filter, which is then fed through a VCA. There's an envelope that controls the VCA, and there's another envelope, very basic envelope generator that controls the filter. And also on the top here is an amount of contour. That's what it says, and, and actually what it is is the amount of envelope modulating the filter. Um, I like to use all three oscillators for a bass sound to get it nice and fat. What I do is I always start off with the first oscillator down low at the 32 foot stop. And I make that a square wave, very hollow. By the way, the envelope on the, on the amplifier has no decay. Its sustain is wide open. Also, the, uh, the, uh, there is no envelope right now um, modulating the filter. We're just hearing the oscillators pass straight through. Let's add a second oscillator. And I put this at a 16-foot stop on a sawtooth waveform. And usually for the third oscillator, I, uh, I usually give myself a choice. I either double it with a second oscillator on the 16-foot stop, or I put it still up another octave, so we have three individual octaves. Again, on the sawtooth. Just to run you by them again, here's the first oscillator. Here's the second, and the third. Now I'll add them together. We'll close our filter up. And now it's time to add some envelope to that filter. And this is a good time to talk about the uh, the sustain portion of these envelope generators and really any envelope generator. Um, the sustain is not a matter, it's not a variable of time, which is usually the case with envelope generators when you're talking about attack or decay or release or, or something like that. What the sustain is, the sustain is a level and that's how loud or how much amplitude will be given when the key is held down. For instance, just on the amplifier, I have no attack here, I have no decay, there's just sustain. And essentially what that'll be is a volume control at this point. It's how loud, it, how loud the sound is when I hold a key down. If I, if I make the sustain zero, the sustain level zero, but I give it some decay time, the sound will go through that decay time, but it'll wind up where I have the sustain level set, which if at zero, winds up being zero. So we'll give it some sustain level. And now we'll give our filter some, some envelope here. And again, the sustain on the filter's envelope is how bright that filter will be when I hold the key down. How bright do I want it to be when I sustain? Then um, a common tweak that you must, you must make is between the initial cutoff frequency and the amount of contour, the amount of envelope that is, that is triggering, that is, I'm sorry, that is modulating the filter. Here's just the cutoff frequency. Here's the amount of contour. So the key area, as far as the filter goes, where I find myself tweaking a lot is the, uh, the cutoff frequency, the overall cutoff frequency, the amount of contour, which is the amount of the envelope triggering or, or modulating the filter, and the sustain level of the filter's envelope generator.
Okay, so things to remember are the relationships that are very important are your cutoff frequency, your overall cutoff frequency in relation to your amount of contour or your amount of envelope triggering your filter, controlling your filter, in relationship to your sustain level on your filter's envelope. And um, give those a go and see if they work.